Our story begins with Linda Carter starting her first day as a nurse. Her parents are proud and she is eager to get started. She meets two women who are going to be her roommates while working at the hospital. The first is named Georgia Jenkins, who grew up in the flats only a few blocks away. The second is Christine Palmer, who was raised in a wealthy home. Christine's father does not approve of her going to be a nurse, and disowns her after she leaves home. Life as a nurse is difficult for all three girls, but none of the roommates get along with each other very much. This changes one day when a major fire happens in the city. Linda is moved to tears over one of the troubled children hospitalized by the fire. Georgia and Christine find and comfort Carter, and from this moment, the three women become close friends. Three years later, the trio have become senior student nurses. Carter is assigned to one patient named Marshall Michaels. Though the man is rude and insists on getting back to work, Nurse Carter treats him well and the two forge a bond together. They begin to see one another and fall in love. Meanwhile, the city is experiencing harsh weather, and with it, many areas are experiencing rolling brownouts. The hospital is doing fine thanks to his generator, much to the resentment of many members of the local community. Georgia is working one night under such conditions, when she is surprised to find her brother Ben and one of his local acquaintances, a man named Rocky, are here dressed as orderlies. She did not expect to see either of these men, and is doubtful that they are actually working for the hospital. Sure enough, the two men are there to plant a bomb on the hospital's generator, in an attempt to restore power in the city and hold the hospital ransom. Georgia gets Carter's help, and together, the two women confront the criminals. Ben realizes that his partner has been lying to him, and that Rocky poses a serious threat to everybody. George's brother tries to stop his partner, and as a result, Ben is shot, while Linda is nearly killed. Luckily, the police arrive just in time. Both men are arrested, but Linda is confident that Ben can be treated with leniency due to his relative innocence in all of this. The next morning, Ben is recovering while Linda gets a visitor. Marshall is here to see her, and the two agree to marry one another. But the wealthy man is going to South America on business. He says that Linda must leave her life behind as a nurse. Carter is unable to do this, so the couple split up. Christine and Georgia find Linda and comfort her, and the three look forward to a better tomorrow. Later, Linda witnesses a woman who was hit by a car. Thanks to Nurse Carter, the woman is saved and rushed to Metro General Hospital. It is discovered that the victim is the daughter of the city's police commissioner. This important man arrives soon after and demands that his daughter be treated by their private physician. Her doctor, a man named William Sutton, is called in, and he enlists Linda and Christine to help conduct the surgery. The operation goes well, and Dr. Sutton is impressed by Christine. He hires the nurse as his special assistant, and the two begin a relationship with one another. Things go well at first, but Christine begins to notice some troubling behavior. Dr. Sutton drinks frequently and prescribes far more medication to his patients than is necessary. When she confronts the doctor about this, he simply manages to convince her that this isn't that big of a deal and has the young woman falsify the prescription records to cover up for him. One day, Dr. Sutton is called in to treat the commissioner's daughter once more. But he has been drinking and taking many pills tonight, enough so that he drives recklessly and worries Christine a great deal. Sutton insists that he is fine, and the surgery commences. The operation goes disastrously, enough so that Christine walks out halfway through. In the end, the young woman dies, and a special inquest is held to investigate whether or not Dr. Sutton is guilty of malpractice. Though she is nervous, Christine testifies against the doctor. Sutton confesses to his crime and apologizes to a devastated Christine. In the next story, a man is dropped off at the hospital in front of Linda, dead on arrival. The man was killed as part of an ongoing gang war, and Nurse Carter is able to help the police identify a suspect who dropped off the body. Carter and Georgia are disturbed by this news and mention they miss Christine, who has disappeared after the events surrounding Dr. Sutton. Linda later runs into Dr. Jack Tyrant a young resident who helped Linda and Christine find the evidence against Dr. Sutton. The two get along well together and have feelings for each other. Later, Linda and Georgia learn that another gang member has been shot, 
The man is named VJ Sloan, a major player in the criminal underworld. The police are here to ensure that no violence erupts in the hospital, and it is clear that Sloan is a target to his rivals. Though uncomfortable with the police around, the two nurses get used to this fairly quickly and resume their usual routine. Georgia has misgivings about treating a criminal like Sloan, but Carter reminds her friend that they both swore an oath not to harm anyone brought into their care. One night, when most of the staff are at a Christmas party, Linda is shocked to find the police guarding Sloan and the head nurse on duty are both missing. Georgia runs to get help, while Linda moves Sloan to another room. Eventually, the same man who dropped off the body earlier arrives, and manages to find Linda. She is nearly shot, but luckily, Dr. Tyron arrives and saves her at the last minute. In the struggle, they manage to stop the attacker, while Georgia successfully finds the police. The day is saved, and Sloan, in spite of his criminal background, lives on. Our next story details the fate of Christine Palmer, following her disappearance. In the girl's grief, she was unable to stay in the city, but refused her father's offer to go back and live with him. She traveled to Boston and got a job as a private physiotherapist. The job is at a place called a Seaside Manor, but Christine is surprised to find that none of the locals are willing to give her a ride to the home. Nobody will tell her why, but it is clear that everyone is afraid of the manor. Chris manages to reach the mansion, where she is greeted by the butler named Harold and an elderly woman named Edna. Nurse Palmer is surprised to learn that her patient isn't the woman, but rather her nephew, a handsome man named Derek. The man is not interested in treatment, and states he is permanently paralyzed. But Chris sticks around in the hopes that Derek would change his mind. Over time, she manages to convince Derek of the value of treatment, and the two begin to get along with each other quite nicely. During her time at the manor, Chris sees many unusual things. Strange lights are seen outside, which the others dismiss as nothing. Derek also nearly falls off a cliff, and on another night, Christine nearly falls off herself on a sabotaged balcony. As she investigates this strange phenomenon, she discovers that Derek is behind him. He reveals that he actually can walk. He pretends to be paralyzed to cover up an illicit drug trade he is involved in, explaining the unusual things Chris has experienced at the manor. He nearly manages to throw her off a cliff, until she is saved at last minute by Harold the butler, who is forced to knock Derek off instead. Edna and Harold are upset at this death, but they understand the young man was up to no good. The trio returns to the manor, each wrapped in their own thoughts concerning a troubled man so twisted by fate that he lost respect for the well-being of others, at the cost of his own life. Our final tale begins years later. A woman named Mila Donovan sits in her hotel room, upset at the news on TV. The televised report says that Daredevil has been shot. Hotel security is outside and demands to be let in. When they eventually decide to break into the room, Donovan is rescued at last minute by the Black Widow. At the Knight Medical Center, the night nurse has an unexpected visitor. A badly wounded Daredevil is being dropped off by Elektra. Meanwhile, the feds are closing in on Matt. With the Kingpin serving as their informant, the agents know Daredevil's true identity. They force a reluctant Ben Urich to give up Matt's location. At the home of Luke Cage and Jessica Jones, Foggy Nelson and Danny Rand stop by. Luke thinks he knows where Matt is, and the heroes set out to visit the night nurse. At the clinic, Daredevil is not responding to treatment, and the situation looks grim. Elektra makes a call for backup when suddenly the power goes out. Black Widow arrives with Donovan, and the two women have a tense standoff. The encounter ends when the hand arrives, but Matt's longtime enemies aren't here to finish him. Instead, one of the hand begins to activate a healing spell to save Daredevil. As they begin the spell, the FBI come to arrest Matt. They demand the hero's surrender, so a battle begins. The hand springs into action and attacks the feds, while Luke Cage and Iron Fist arrive and join in on the fray. The fight goes well until Matt is cured, and he asks everyone to stop. He doesn't want this fight, and agrees to surrender to the FBI. The Hand flees, while the feds try to arrest Luke Cage and Iron Fist for attacking the agents. Black Widow threatens to use her shield ties against the FBI, so they agree to leave Rand and Cage alone. However, there's no helping Matt. He's in too far deep at this point. To the amusement of his enemies, and the grief of his friends, 
Matt Murdock finds himself alone and in a jail cell. Hello and welcome to Comic Island. My name is Arden and this is my recap and review of Night Nurse number one. So I didn't have much to cover this week myself. None of my usual stuff had anything out, nor did any new series out this week catch my fancy. So I went to this comic, a collection of the original Night Nurse miniseries from the 70s in a reprint of a modern Daredevil comic featuring this character. And I'm pretty glad I did. For those who are curious about Rosario Dawson's character from the Netflix Daredevil series, it's pretty clear that Night Nurse is primarily the inspiration for that role, with a little bit of another character named Claire Temple serving as her namesake and as a potential future for her in the Netflix series. It's quite an interesting comic overall. All three of these characters are basically considered different versions of Night Nurse, and this was the original series that introduced them. Only Christine and Linda have appeared in comics since then, and the Daredevil comic is a good example of their modern role in the superhero community. And I do find it infinitely amusing that there's a character named Linda Carter in Marvel's continuity. The funny part of all of this is that these comics actually came out before Linda Carter played Wonder Woman in the television show, so this is all just one big hilarious coincidence. I enjoyed both the old and new comics included here. The Night Nurse series is interesting. You can tell just by reading it that this was published in the 70s at a time when every comic was dealing with serious social issues to varying degrees of success. It is cool seeing the gender norms and the aesthetic typical of the 70s, but with that comes a certain goofiness to everything. Many plot points are so blunt and obvious it's hard to take them seriously. For example, I doubt that even in the 70s, people would look at hospitals during blackouts and be all, Ooh, those darn doctors greedily using that power to help all those selfish sick people. Arr. And like many other comics from this era, the exposition is also overly relied on, to the point that it takes some getting used to. But beyond that, there's actually some pretty good storytelling with a decent amount of depth given the time period that these comics were published for. Even though this comic was deliberately made by Marvel for women, it rarely ever feels like it's pandering to a female audience. It's just a set of stories featuring three women, three of which delve into some serious medical, financial, and political issues, and for some reason a fourth that was basically a ghost story. But these plot points are all original enough that I could never quite tell where these stories were going, and it was pretty powerful and well written overall. A lot of these characters are multi-dimensional and not cookie cutter stereotypes. So long as you look at these comics with the right perspective, it's something that came out 40 years ago and might not conform to modern standards when it comes to comics, then Night Nurse on the whole is a very enjoyable miniseries and worth checking out. As for the Daredevil comic, well, it does come from a pretty awesome period in Daredevil history, so I like that too. But it does lack a certain context to its story. Without any build-up, it doesn't quite feel as significant. It just feels like Matt comes out of the blue in this story with his secret identity outed and he finds himself in jail at the end of this comic without much explanation for any of it. It is explained well in the Daredevil series, but that context is lost in this publication. Still, it is cool to compare Night Nurse as she started to this character she became in the modern era, and the Daredevil comic was also quite fun. On the whole, I do recommend you check out Night Nurse number one for yourself. At a cover price of only $8, you hit 5 comics, all of which I enjoyed quite a bit. So it's a pretty good deal if I ever saw one. Hopefully you guys liked this review, I'm not really sure whether this sort of thing would be of interest to our viewers, so let me know what you think in the comments section below. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.